Hi and welcome back to Chef Hacker Kitchen. You may notice that I'm not wearing my chef coat today, but instead today I'm wearing my Mary Turns 100 t-shirt. That's because the recipe I'm doing today was taught to me by my great Aunt Mary. And this is a shirt that I got for her 100th birthday several years ago. The, the recipe we're doing today is a wonderful Italian Easter dessert called wheat pie. It has wheat berries in it, it has rigotta cheese, it has a little bit of sweetness but not much, and uh, chocolate and cherry. I think you're going to love it, so take a look. So today we're actually going to be giving you a two for one in terms of recipes. We're going to be talking about the filling for the wheat pie and then we're going to be talking about the crust as well. Okay, let's get started with the filling. Um, we need about a pound and a half of rigotta cheese. We got about a third of a cup of chocolate, uh, and, and it should be shreds. I uh, like to use um, the same kind of chocolate chips you'd use for cookies, um, the dark ones, and then I just kind of rough chop them. Well, we're going to need about a half a cup of wheat berries, and when my aunt told me about this recipe, she said the hardest thing about this recipe is finding these wheat berries. I found that many supermarkets now have them. Uh, Asian vegetable stores often have them. Um, we're going to need three eggs. We're going to use about a tablespoon of orange juice, and this, in my opinion, um, Aunt Mary is gone now, so I can't ask her, but this was her hack. Most recipes would use uh, orange zest and lemon zest. Her recipe uses a teaspoonful of orange juice. Um, then we have six uh, chopped up maraschino cherries, um, one tablespoon of vanilla, and then I include a little bit of powdered sugar uh, to top the pie off um, when it's finished. Now, let's focus on the pie crust. Uh, we have two cups of flour, one cup of butter that we're going to keep very cold. We have um, three tablespoons of water, which we're also going to keep uh, very cold. You'll notice I have ice cubes in there. Um, we have one tablespoon of white vinegar, and we have one egg that we're going to beat up, uh, and we're going to reserve a little bit of it. Most of it is going to go into the dough and we're going to save a little bit so that we can brush the top of the, uh, the lattice that we're going to form so it gets nice and brown before we put it in the oven. Okay, first, first step is going to be to cook the wheat berries. Uh, so let's get that. All right, so we have our salted boiling water and we're going to go ahead and add our wheat berries. <clears throat> Give that a stir and wait for it to come back to a boil, which should happen rather quickly. And it's just about starting to boil. I'll come back and stir it occasionally, but let me go ahead and set the timer, and then we can go ahead and get our pie crust ready. While our wheat berries are cooking, we're going to go ahead and make our pie crust because the pie crust is going to have to chill in the refrigerator for about 15 or 20 minutes um, so that we can roll it out without too much difficulty. This is very simple. You'll recall there were five ingredients. We're basically going to um, blend the flour and the, and the butter together and then we're going to mix these three ingredients, the liquid ingredients, the eggs, the vinegar, and the water, and then we're going to combine the two. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, you can use two knives to do this. You can use your hands, you can use a, a mixer, but I like to use this little device that um, I learned about from my wife. And you pretty much just keep uh, pounding it down. This is kind of a messy job, uh, but you keep just pounding it down and uh, until you get what looks like a bunch of uh, little white peas like, you know, green peas. Well, these will be little white peas. And uh, what you're trying to do is you want to get the flour and the uh, butter to not really combine as much as to uh, form partners, I like to call them. So that between each bit of flour, you got a little bit of butter. And uh, then when you add your liquid ingredients, that'll sort of 
uh, suspend. Then when you go and cook your pie, the um, butter and the flour will uh, form little pockets and it'll be nice and light and flaky. All right, so that's about where I want it to be. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my liquid ingredients or blend my liquid ingredients and then and then mix them all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, beat my egg and add my vinegar and my three tablespoons of ice, ice water. Now you probably know if you're a baker that with pie dough, a lot the amount of water required sometimes varies based on the humidity in the air. If it's a more, more humid day, you may use less water. If it's a less humid day, you may use more water. So you kind of have to just get a feel for it. And, and, and again, you want to blend this till it comes together. Um, I'm inclined to use my hands, um, but it's really a no-no. The heat that um, transfers from your hand to the, to the crust tends to melt that butter, and uh, then you lose all flakiness altogether. So I'll use a spoon. I'll use this device. And sometimes I'll even go to the store and just buy some pre-made crust, but not today. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it a little bit in a way that I should not mix it. Which is with my hand. So don't tell anybody, okay? If there are children in the room, please go ahead and skip this part of the video. We, want, we don't want them to see this. All right. So I may have to add a bit more water later, but we're going to let that sit in the refrigerator. And uh, we'll be able to tell when we pull it out to, to roll it out. Now, remember I said we're going to save a little bit of our a little bit of our egg and I'm going to put a bit of water in there and that'll be our egg wash later on. Okay. All right. So the timer's gone off. It has been 40 minutes. The 30 minutes uh, cooking I checked just wasn't done. So I'm going to give it a check right now. Take a few of the wheat berries and just yeah, they're done. Good. Okay. So we'll go ahead and take these over and drain them. All right. Now you'll recall this was a third of a cup of uncooked. And this will give us about, uh, probably about almost a cup of cooked. And we're looking for three quarters of a cup of cooked. I always like to make a little extra because I really like it. And um, if I don't use it in the recipe, I'll put it in the refrigerator and eat it with butter. Uh, warm it up and eat it with butter at a later time. Okay, so let's get going here. Okay, so we gave a few minutes for the wheat berries to cool down. And now we're going to go ahead and mix up our ingredients. And uh, 
There's nothing magical about this. You basically just mix everything together. So here we go. Beat the eggs. I'll add our orange juice. Aunt Mary's hack. Add the vanilla. Now our wheat berries have cooled down a little bit, so it's safe to go ahead and mix those in. And now I'm going to go ahead and switch to a spoon. And I'm going to add my chocolate and my cherries. And the ricotta. And all I need to do now is make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Okay. I'll put this in the fridge while we make our pie crust. All right. Our pie crust has been in the fridge for about, well now it's going on close to an hour. So it's nice and cold. So let me take a little bit of flour. By the way, I just cleaned this countertop. Very important. I don't want bacteria and dirt to get in my pie dough. So I always clean it first and then dry it. So a little flour and I'm gonna turn this into a kind of a, kind of a ball. And let's see how good our dough is going to be. Put a little flour on top. Put a little flour on my rolling pin. And then I'm going to go ahead and come up with a pie crust here. I believe. Let's see. Now... I am the first to admit that I am not the best pie dough maker. I have never been terribly fond of baking. I generally like to cook and leave the baking to others. However, one thing that I do cook that I love to make is a pot pie. I absolutely love a pot pie. So I can make a crust, but pot pie crust is different than a pie crust in that there's no sweetness and it's got to be more durable to stand up to the what's basically a, a, a meat stew inside. So that's really... Now normally we would cut this into two pieces, a big one and a small one. The big one would be for the the bottom, and the top, and the small one would be for the lattice top. But I'm doing it a little differently because I want the top to be a little bit more durable than the bottom. So what I'm going to do instead, a little bit bigger, I'm going to roll it out. I'm going to cut out the bottom piece, then I'm going to reform the lattice parts. Alright, so we'll see how that's going to work out in a, a few minutes. Okay. So yeah, I'll go about that big around. I think that'll probably do it. All right.
and place this in. Give it just a little stretch here. All right, and I guess that's not a half bad by crust. Now we'll go ahead and cut my strips. So now I'll clean this area up, we'll fill the pie, and we'll, and that will be that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is preheat our oven to 375 degrees. Okay, so I preset our oven to 375 degrees. Uh, the pie crust is ready, the lattice strips are cut, so now we're gonna go ahead and fill our pie crust. Now generally, even though this is a deep dish pie, I generally, generally get a little bit too much. But I think we're gonna be okay this time. Good, all right. So. All right. Now, I fully admit this is a part that I'm not that good at. So if you have tips that can help me be better at creating a lattice top, go ahead and put them in the comments down below or go over to the website and start a chat there. But what I like to do is I like to brush the edges with a little bit of water so I can get some good adhesion going for my lattice tops, my lattice strips rather. And that may do it. Okay, and then I go and I pick some of the longer ones and I try to adhere those to where it makes the most sense for them to be. All right, and then I bend them back over. So I'm going to go that way with those and I'm going to go this way with these. Oops, like that. All right, here's another somewhat long one, so I'll go here with that, hopefully that'll stick, and let's see, I got this one here, and that'll be probably go this way with this one. I like to put them about an inch apart, and that generally Leaves me some extra. All right, so now here's where I typically fell up. I think the way you do this is like this. I think. And then you put one here. And that one goes there. This one goes under, and this one goes over, this one goes under. I think that's how you do it. So let's see here. So that means this one will go under, All right? This one will go under, and this one will go over, under. I always feel a little bit like a uh, seamstress when I'm doing this for some unknown reason. 
And then this one will start over. And we'll go under. And then we'll go over. Again, if there's a better way to do this that you folks know about, please clue me in, huh? Okay, and then I kind of just pinch all these, honestly hoping that they will all stay and not burn. Now I know there is a way to um, cover these with foil, but I typically don't do that. The most I'll do is just add a little, a little more water here. And then maybe do a fluted kind of a thing on the top. And you remember we saved the egg earlier. And I like to add some egg wash. It'll give the, um, give the crust a nice brown color. It'll be, it'll look so good that you don't even want to eat it. And so that's how nice it's going to look. At least that's how it usually happens. Nonetheless, I eat it anyway. All right, into the oven it goes. All right. And I have a pan underneath the rack that this pie is on. I just always do that. And we'll be in there for about 45 minutes. Okay, so timer's gone off. Let's go ahead and check. Okay, actually it looks about done, but I'd like a little more brown on the interior, so I'm going to put it in for another 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 more minutes have passed. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, I like that brown color. Let's top our pie. All right, now I've got some uh, powdered sugar and a sieve. So I'm going ahead and dust the top of this with some powdered sugar. This isn't a real sweet dessert, so you need something on the top of it. Okay, good. Now we'll let this cool. Um, maybe even put it in the fridge uh, for a couple of hours or overnight and then go ahead and serve it. Uh, it's wonderful with some espresso or any kind of strong coffee really. Aunt Mary's Wheat Pie, a wonderful regatta based dessert that is not too sweet and is just perfect for Easter. Now if you want to pair it with some other Easter foods like um, uh, boneless roast leg of lamb, uh, rice pilaf, then go to the website and take a look at some of the other recipes or to the YouTube page. There's plenty of, uh, plenty of Easter recipes there too as well. Now, if you like this video, please go ahead down below and hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe where we are, our subscriber list is growing and that's going to help us do more and more of these videos. Okay. We hope to see you next time in Chef Hacker Kitchen.